Hello, brothers and sisters. I'd like to share with you some more from Philippians, Paul's letter from lockdown. Paul's in prison. He's writing to his friends in Philippi. And I think that his letter from lockdown is proving very helpful to us in our own lockdown. But we're going to read from chapter 1, verses 15 to 18. And I find what Paul writes here quite extraordinary. Listen to this. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached, and because of this, I rejoice. That's incredible. Paul is in prison, and people who should have been supporting him are actually trying to make more trouble for him. What on earth were they thinking of? And how do you preach Christ out of envy and rivalry? God alone knows what they were up to. I don't pretend to un understand at all what was in their minds. But we know what was in Paul's mind, Christ. And because of this, he's able to rejoice because the gospel of Christ is spreading, even though many of the preachers left a lot to be desired. Now, that doesn't mean that their behavior didn't hurt him. But Paul never looked at his sufferings in isolation. He wasn't just saying, oh, this is making me feel terrible. The question he's always asking himself is, what is this doing for Christ? Christ is preached, he says, and that's what matters, and therefore I rejoice. Now, here's what we can learn from this. Whatever problems we may be facing at the moment, we need to ask Paul's question. What is this doing for Christ? Not, oh, why is this happening to poor little me? But rather, how is Christ's kingdom going to grow? Suppose, like Paul, you've got people who are making life difficult for you. Well, that's not very nice, but frankly, you can't change them, and God isn't even asking you to. But God is concerned for what's going on in your heart, in your life, because God loves you, and he is growing you. He is training you. Now, we would all like an easier life. And praise God, if we're Christians, one day we will most certainly have one because we're going to be in paradise with our Lord, where sin and suffering will be gone. But for now, God is growing us. He is refining us. And in order to do that, here's what he does. He lets pieces of this world die in our hands so that increasingly we are freed from asking this world to give us what God alone can give us. That's how he protects us from giving our allegiance to things which can never deliver what our heart is seeking. Now, is that a tough message to accept? Well, frankly, I think it's an impossible message to accept, apart from the gospel. But the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ change everything. This God loves us enough to die for us. This God is big enough to overcome death for us. This God gave everything for me, and I can trust him with all that I am and have. This God will never stop working in me until he has restored me completely in the likeness of Jesus. Let me close by giving you two words to underline in your Bible from this passage. There are two little words that you'll find in verse 16. They're the words, put here, put here. Paul says, I am put here. In other words, God put me here in this situation. It wasn't a mistake. The Greek word that Paul uses is originally a military term. What Paul is saying is, I'm under orders. I'm put here by God's appointment. I'm at my post. Now, that is true of every Christian. It's true of you in the situation you're in now. God has got you where you are in order to grow his kingdom in you and through you. 
that is his grace to you. It won't always be comfortable. It will always be good. And as we learn to surrender to God's grace, so he produces a glorious harvest in us and through us. Let's pray for that now. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us at all times. Please, please help us to seek first your kingdom, knowing that we can trust you with everything else. God bless you, friends. Bye for now.